Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Cat Jackie. And today we're talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022, not to be confused with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003, or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. This is the latest reboot of the franchise in a franchise that is almost entirely composed of reboots at this mm -hmm. point. Um, yep. But it is not a remake. It is a legacy sequel, which this is the second legacy sequel this franchise has gotten, by the way, because Texas Chainsaw 3D without the. Yep. <laughs> just Texas Chainsaw with the 3D on it. Yep. And if you didn't get the 3D version, it's just Texas Chainsaw. Uh, that was also a legacy reboot. So this is <laughs> this is going all over the place. So. Uh, for those of you who don't know, legacy sequels are sequels that take place years after the original movie, but are like direct sequels to the original movie and often will ignore the continuity of whatever sequels have come up to this point. Yeah, yeah. This is um, this is your 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 new Halloween. Yeah, your, Halloween uh, twenty eighteen is the, the the textbook example of this. Actually, like it's is the, is is it is the gold standard of legacy sequel at this point. Yep. Um, uh, and uh, this movie is definitely like following in that vein, but not quite. Because one thing I actually really like about this movie is that this movie takes whatever expectations you have going in, especially after you watch the trailer and you get kind yeah, of a, yeah. an idea of what the movie's going to be about, and then kind of fucks with those expectations for the entirety of its runtime. Yeah, probably the most important thing to know about this film is that is hold in there. <laughs> the movie starts out looking like it's going to be one kind of movie. Oh yeah, and it's not. Okay, so one of the interesting things about this movie is that when the trailer came out, uh, it got mixed reactions from people, but like, they were like political reactions. There were people that were that were annoyed that the movie's gonna be too woke. And uh, let's be real, the only reason they were mad about that is because the movie obviously stars two women and a black man. Yeah. And that was, and they're gonna be the leads of yeah. the movie. And that was gonna obviously piss, them, piss, uh, piss the uh, people who get mad at woke stuff off. Um, but then there were other people who were mad that it was making fun of quote unquote woke culture uh, by having a joke in it at the expense of cancel culture. Um, so both sides of the political aisle were mad at the movie before it came out. Um, and what's interesting about the movie is that when you start watching the movie, you think it's gonna be a movie with a very specific political point of view. And if you don't have that political point of view, which I really don't, um, I was a little worried as the movie was going on. But then as the movie got like going and, it, and kicked into the second act, it became clear that like, no, that's not the political point the movie's trying to make. Uh, it Any political point the movie's trying to make is kind of ancillary to just Leatherface killing people. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is yeah. some political stuff going on here because basically the plot of the movie involves these uh, four uh, influencers from, uh, from the city who have decided to move out to this uh, rural town that is essentially abandoned at this point because the the bank has foreclosed on everyone's home and basically kicked everyone out because no one could afford rent anymore because we're in an economic turmoil yeah. situation right now in America and this movie's definitely playing upon that. Um so you have the um the city folk versus rural folk tensions that Texas Chainsaw Massacre is known for. But this was a weird case where it kind of felt like the movie was gonna side with the racist rural folk yeah. for a second. Yeah, it looked like it was for a half, for a hot second. Yeah, because there. there's there's definitely some tensions early on where like the black character notices another character's house has a uh, Confederate flag on it. Um, uh, he has a problem with this. Uh, this leads into a weird sticky situation to where you're kind of not sure whose side you should be on in the scenario. Because yeah, yeah, because it gets really <laughs> weird, but then it turns out it, it, it kind of does a maniac cop on you. Yeah. Because Maniac Cop is not sympathetic towards the police at all. No, no, no. You definitely have a little bit of, of uh, political commentary about elite neoliberals versus rural folk, yeah. um, but it's very muted. It's not as, it, it, they probably could have done more with it than they did, let me put it that way. Yeah, if they wanted to make it the point of the movie, they would have. Yeah, you know? but really what this movie is about is this movie is a revenge story involving Leatherface. Now, I'm not gonna tell you exactly why it's a revenge story yet. If you saw the trailer, you're gonna have one idea of how it might be. 
but it's not exactly that. And you'll see when you finally see the movie, because this movie throws a twist in really early on that I was not expecting and actually fixed my initial criticism of the first trailer for this movie, because the trailer for this movie presented Leatherface as like the central antagonist, um, as if he had been the central antagonist from the get go. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre has always been about a family and Leatherface was always a member of that family. He's like the mascot of the family. Yeah. But he's not the leader of the family in like all of the first four Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Actually, most of the Texas Chainsaw Massacres, there's always another character who's more the leader. Yeah, it's usually like the dad yeah. or something. There, there's the know? dad in the first two. Um, there's the... Uh, 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 the guy in the wheelchair in the rebate. I forget what Viggo Mortensen's relationship is to uh, Leatherface in the third movie. Isn't but he like the older brother? I, th I think it's the older brother, yeah. yeah but he's more like the leader in that one. And then you got Matthew McConaughey, who's also a brother in the yeah. in the uh, in the next generation. And of course, the sheriff. The sheriff in the remake, <laughs> you know, who best part of the remake is definitely the sheriff. He is, he is an amazing villain. Um, uh, oh, so bring it. He's never been like the central antagonist. So I was kind of worried they were gonna kind of present him as being more intelligent for lack of a better way of putting it to, to presenting him as more of like a ringleader kind of character. Um, but this movie doesn't do that. It actually gives him a very good reason why he just starts killing all of a sudden in this case. And, and to a point where you almost are on his side for some of the killing, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, for like a half second. Yeah, there. you're almost you're almost like right there with, with Bubba, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, you definitely got like, the, the, the thing that I was really relieved at is that this did not just do Halloween 2018 again, which is what it looked like it was going to was That was my... Was I was really afraid it was going to do. That was my second worry with the trailer was that it was just going to be Halloween 2018 again, but less so because we don't have the original actress who plays Sally. Right. We have a different actress playing Sally, so it's going to have less of an impact than having the original actress around. Yeah. Um. But th but thankfully they don't actually do that. They do something else, and we'll talk about that when we get to the get to the spoiler section because that's that's mainly second act stuff yeah <laughs> um but but sally does return in this and she she is pretty fucking awesome and badass in this yeah um, but it's not Hall halloween 2018 yeah it's not gonna, that yeah but if you yeah just just a warning if you go in there's a minute where you're gonna be like are we gonna be sympathizing with the fucking dixie flag waving yeah this is shit here for like half a second no no that's not but what i no. kind of liked about the movie is that the movie fucks with your expectations. It does. Like it yeah. presents you some characters that you think are going to be kind of that kind of like racist hit kind of stereotype. And then they turn out to be actually a little bit more cooler than that. Yeah. You know, and, and it presents you some characters that you think are going to be like the cool hip new kids. And some of them turn out to be assholes. Like it's like, yeah. you know, it kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it works. It works. You know, and to, to, to the point where some of these main characters are probably the most unlikable main characters of any Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. And that's saying a lot, because there's some shitty main characters yeah, in this franchise. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Like, it's, it's, although it does have that kind of feeling where, it does have that feeling where, like the original, you don't necessarily feel like everyone deserved it. Not everyone, no. Yeah. Not everyone deserves it. Some people are just, like, collateral damage yeah. in Leatherface's Rampage, and other people are just straight up good people that are caught up in the crossfire. Yeah. Um, like, like Leatherface has a vendetta against specific people in this, um, and he doesn't care who else he kills in the process, um, especially if they're getting in his way. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah sometimes that's... literally just standing in his yeah, way. Yeah, literally just standing <laughs> there and, uh, that... hey, look, so Tate's had to go somewhere. Not a lot of there. people deserve it, but it does mean that some characters, like, you almost kind of are looking forward to seeing them die because of some of the things they do at the beginning of this movie. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's kind of got both. It's got the characters you care about and you empathize with and you're following and you give a shit about, especially the uh, younger sister. The youngest sister is the one who's the most sympathetic. Absolutely. Because one of the, uh, one of the characters here is a survival of a school, survivor of a school shooting. Which is a really cool element. I kind of wish they did more with it, but I liked it as an element. It, yeah. gave, it gave a whole new dimension to the final girl kind of. Archetype. Yeah, yeah. It was that, it was that you... When you get to the end of the movie, it doesn't feel like all of a sudden she got superpowers. No, no. You know, like it, it feels like, no, this is a continuation of the shit she's already been through. Oh yeah, but it's also really kind of cool to watch her 
grapple with her trauma and kind of using the situation to kind of like, I wish I'd done this last time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mm -hmm. wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. I wish I didn't just lay there, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and it, 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 it makes for a very compelling main character. I've seen some people say that like, like there are no characters in this that are any good, but there's, oh, there's a couple characters I really all. liked. Like, I really liked the return of Sally. It's not what you expect Sally to be like, but I really kind of like this take on Sally. Um, Sally 50 years later. Yeah. Or yeah. however old, old she is. Um, I really liked the little sister. And I, and there and there's this one hit character that I thought I was going to hate, but I ended up really liking. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, the mechanic guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah I ended up yeah. really liking that character. Like, I thought he was just going to be a total, like, like douchebag, but they fuck with yeah, the Yeah, but, but he pulls an asshole move that fucks everybody. He's kind of set up like he's going to maybe be the hitchhiker of this Yeah, movie, I know, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, you expect him to be kind of like that, but then they like, do something else with it. And I'm like, okay, all right, that's cool. That's cool. You know, you're not the McConaughey of this movie. <laughs> no, no, he's not Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> well, let's see. What do we got here? We got a uh, lot of killing. Yes. Has a high body count. My, my my inner gore hound was fucking satisfied as hell with this movie. This movie is gory and bloody as shit. Leatherface uses his chainsaw. There's a point in which he like massacres like 20 people at once. Yep. And you get to see all of it. It's not like it just cuts away. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not a cut away. It's like, no, no, no. Here's Leatherface. Dude, Leatherface <laughs> fucking breaks a man's arm and then fucking stabs him to death with the jagged bone on the yeah. end of that arm. I think I've seen him use the chainsaw in way more creative ways in this than I have in the entire Texas Chainsaw franchise well, yeah like, like damn like th th what was the last time like he did some like chainsaw ballet with this yeah shit? yeah it's like the it was like the end of the first movie and yeah. that, that's it you know but no this 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 absolutely satisfied oh yeah i, it, I couldn't believe it it's, it as a gore hound i i love i love the gore in this movie this it, it reminded me of like a slightly more comedic, it, even though it's not a comedy, but but like yeah, some it's of not the, a comedy. Some but of the kills like... are a little funny, and some of the kills are very brutal and intense, and it kind of depends upon the kill. But it, it reminded me of like uh, of uh, the Hills of Eyes remake. Yeah, yeah. If you are a person on either side of the political fence who needs a movie to specifically cater to your political point of view, then oh, you are not going to find it here. You're not going to find it here. No. Like it has some commentary there and some of the commentary I agree with and some of it I, I find a little iffy. Um, like I definitely agree with the whole like neoliberal rich people coming to poor town to save it by kicking everyone out. Yeah, yeah, like, there's, there's, there's gentrification is a thing. Yeah, it's a know? thing. E even in rural white communities, gentrification can happen. Yes. You know? Yeah. But the part where I'm supposed to kind of like empathize with someone's like Confederate flag just because their grandpa used to wave it, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm sorry. not at all. I'm sort of like that. Like, if that had just been a state Texas flag, maybe you'd have a case. Oh yeah, right? but but I do like agree that like like whether or not there was some sort of racial undercurrent there, like we're just gonna kick people out of their homes. That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, totally. That's that's fucked up. And to be fair, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, while it has always had the undercurrent of rural versus city folk, it's never 100 percent like just came down on. Rural folk are right or city folk are right. Yeah, no, it never has. Like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, those kids really didn't do anything wrong except a little bit of trespassing. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, certainly not anything worth like getting sawed in half. Exactly. For, exactly. Know? Exactly. You know, uh, uh, I think my favorite actual one that had like the city folk versus rural folk kind of divide um, is weirdly enough, the Texas Chainsaw remakes prequel not leatherface but the prequel to the remake oh the, yeah yeah that one had this cool thing where it was a bunch of kids that were trying to they were on the run because they were they dodged the draft yeah and arlie ermy like 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 as the sheriff is like an ex-war vet and so he like fucking like tortures them and there's it a takes cool, exception there's a cool yeah. little dynamic there going on now a lot of people have taken exception to uh the humor in this movie um i actually don't mind it i thought the humor what little of it there was in this movie was l genuinely hilarious to me i thought I know everyone's fucking cringing over the cancel joke, but I, that shit was hilarious to me. You canceled, bro. Some some guy tried to cancel Leatherface <laughs> and Leatherface chainsawing him into the face. That's my kind of shit. I oh love yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Because I mean, like, <laughs> come on. That's great. Know? That's beautiful. I, I don't care if you can't laugh at that. I'm sorry. I thought it was hilarious. I don't. I don't get what's so cringy about it. To me, like, I'm so sick of social media as it is. To me, that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Exactly. 
you know, I, Jesus Christ, like, no, like, there's always been, it's a, it's a funny thing, like, you always, you always think, let us not pretend that doesn't happen, Yeah, as I like to say, let's not pretend it doesn't happen, you know, it's not necessarily the thing that, you know, people are making all the political hay over, Yeah, but it is, a, it's an annoying fucking thing that happens, Yeah, yeah. you know, because it's, it, it turns into one of those witch hunts where the innocent are the ones who tend to get massacred. Oh yeah, well, the, the, like, know? let's not pretend like there isn't like weaponized cancels. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? But but are. even with that, even with that, like, I just think it's inherently hilarious that someone thinks canceling is going to do anything to Leatherface. To Leatherface, yeah, that's I just a think, joke. I, I think that's know? an inherently hilarious. Oh, thing. we got you, bro, on camera. He's like, no, I don't care. Let me make one thing perfectly clear here. My yeah. favorite of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies is the second one, which is the yeah. one that's an overt comedy. So. <laughs> Of the Lord of the Harvest. Yes. But anyway, so the things I liked about this movie, I love the gore. Um, I, I love the I love the, the the school shooter survivor main character. Yeah, I thought yeah, that, that was, was really great, cool. That was a great addition. Yeah, I like the twists and the and the and the, and the uh, expectation subversions they do throughout it, especially with the Sally character. Um, and uh, overall, I, I I thought the movie was just a solid ass slasher. You know, yeah. Um, it's not like the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. This one feels way more like just Leatherface as a slasher. Oh which yeah. The closest one that came to that was probably the third one that did that. Uh, Leatherface. Yeah, Leatherface. Yeah. Uh, the things that I thought were a little iffy. There's some things that brought up that I think it would have been cool to explore a little bit more, but that's just me. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure no dead animals in this. No dead animals. Yeah. Not even, not even a dead armadillo. Nope. None of that. Nope. None of that. Um, there's not much I need to warn you about. There's no sexual assault or anything like that. Um, let the this this isn't one of the more rapey leather faces as there has yeah. been in the past. <laughs> yeah, like two. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So uh, uh, I, I feel like I could have explored some things a little bit more, but overall, I would say this is probably the most fun I've had with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie since the Texas Chainsaw Massacre two. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's been some highs and lows of the franchise in between these two movies, but overall, I like this better than the uh, the original Legacy reboot, uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. I, I really did not like oh, that God, one. Oh, God, I hated that one. Um, I thought the prequel to that one was also not that great. Um, I like the remake, and I like the remake's reboot, but I think this movie is way more my speed than those two, if that well, makes sense. Well, yeah, because like this is... How to put it, man? This one's more a little bit more of a crowd pleaser. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's like, much more. It's much more of an entertaining crowd pleasing movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the, the the remakes, as much as I like them, those are just brutal, intense movies that are that 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 like dare you to keep sitting through them. Yeah, you well, know? you could tell that they were made like post saw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. This one feels like it's a callback to like the old yeah. like eighties. All right, we're just gonna fucking. Hack people up oh yeah this is more off. 80s gore yeah you know with a little bit of the brutality of the early 2000s but like yeah occasionally but a lot more of the chuckles yeah you know? yeah 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 it's it's supposed you, you're supposed to be like <laughs> yeah a little <laughs> he bit he beat him to death with his own head um, <laughs> and, and when it comes to uh texas chainsaw three and four uh four is just bad like that that's Four's new generation right yeah next generation next generation yeah I just next make generation sure I is the one that you either like because it's so bad it's good or you just dislike because it's so bad well that's yeah the well one. Like, here's the thing is i like to say like isn't an is it an entertaining movie yes is it a good movie no no <laughs> no it's real bad but you find yourself going huh leather face in a dress Okay. It's also the one that leans way more into like the transphobia aspect. Oh no, it totally does. Like like a it little totally bit does. And it also has the weird thing where Matthew McConaughey and Leatherface are part of the Illuminati. It's like oh my there's some weird yeah. ass shit in that movie. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, like it makes no sense. Okay. Yeah. It's just Woo! Yeah. Any misgivings you have about Ch Texas Chainsaw Next Generation are probably very well earned. Uh, Texas Chainsaw 3, I like what it was trying to do. The problem with that movie is that movie was butchered by the MPAA. And also it had so much production trouble. Like, like there was a point where they fired the director, but then they had no one to replace him. So they rehired him to finish the movie. 
So that oh movie is a mess as a, resu- as a result of that. It's a complete mess. It's a narrative mess. And a lot of the gore that would have been the highlight of the movie is really cut out of that movie. And it's, it's a real shame. That being said, it has the best soundtrack. I fucking love the soundtrack to the third one. It's all thrash metal songs and death metal songs. And I love it. Well, yeah, because <laughs> like, I think hadn't, we, we, we just did like fucking dream warriors. Yeah. So yeah. We gotta, we gotta <laughs> amp this up. But yeah, this one's probably my favorite above all of those with, well, obviously the first two movies are better, but those are the best, like hands down. Gold standard, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 for the serious movies, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 for the more comedic movies. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the thing I think is funny about like Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw 3 is mm-hmm. that that's one of the times when a movie with a trailer that spoofed another well-known trailer is actually endured longer than that movie that's true you know because the original leatherface if you're like what the fuck are you talking about jack all right go out look at it look at it look at the leatherface texas chainsaw 3 and then look at the original trailers for excalibur now yeah. so much is explained yep yep you know like because that was the whole joke it's kind of like how the second movie had a poster that was doing the breakfast club yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love that shit i love that shit so I recommend uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. There's a lot of people that feel differently from me and that's fine, but I- I'm telling you right now, I had fun with this movie. And I and you might too, if you like any of the things we've mentioned so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, we're gonna move on to the spoilers. Oh yeah, it's available on Netflix. It's oh, a Netflix movie. Right. If you wanna watch it, go watch it on Netflix. They might release it on home video later because they've started doing that with some movies. Yeah. Um, but right now it's only available on Netflix. So go watch it there. You don't even need to buy a theater ticket. Just go watch it on Netflix. And with that said, we're going to move on to the spoilers because there's actually a whole lot of twists and turns in this movie that we haven't talked about because they're spoilers. So yeah, let's do that. It's a lot of killing. There's a lot of killing. A lot of killing. So the the first thing that's not in the trailer that is uh, kind of like a spoilery thing is that Leatherface's motivation in this movie is that there's like a mother figure that they don't really go into it. And this is actually one criticism I have is I was quite kind of confused at how this works in in the original movie's continuity. Yeah, like where, who is she? Yeah, yeah, where Leatherface had this woman who ran this orphanage that he kind of looked at as a mother, but obviously wasn't his mother because I don't think I don't think age wise that would have lined no, up. No, 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 no. no. But it, but he kind of like sees her as as a mother, and she kind of refers to her him as one of her one of her one of her boys. I don't know if this means that like Leatherface was adopted at some point or what the fuck's going on. Yeah, yeah. They make it. They try to make it look like he was like a much, like he was like an older kid that somehow ended up in this orphanage. Yeah, which um, is entirely possible. I don't know. I'm not sure how that works continuity wise. In fact, it might just be a flat out plot hole. It's so weird and messy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't bug me nearly as much as like Texas Chainsaw 3D's like 20 years later, but they're live, 20 years later, live streaming on cell phones. live streaming on smartphones <laughs> that don't exist in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't bug me nearly as much as that, but it is one of those fridge moments where you think about it later and go like, does that make any sense? Like, Yeah, yeah. Like, did what happened to the... They, did the rest of the family... Was the whole rest of the family well, killed? Th- there's a line about, like, the rest of my boys died, but I don't know if the rest of her boys refers to the Sawyer family or... or, or uh, it's the Sawyers in the original movie, right? I can't remember if it's... There's, the like, Sawyers five different the Texas chain... Yeah, yeah. There's, like, five different Texas Chainsaw Massacre families at this point. Yeah, so. I, I, it's either the Cutters or the Sawyers. Yeah, yeah, whichever whichever one it is, there's there's like this. Uh, uh, the, the, the boys are dead, and I, I don't know if that if she was referring to them or like the other boys in her orphanage. It's one of those things that they don't explain, and I kind of wish they did because it was confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also well, there's also the possibility that what it was trying to say is that Leatherface was adopted. Mm-hmm. You know, and that after the events of like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he just kind of wanders his way back to the orphanage. Yeah, yeah, and maybe this is one of those things where they're planning on making more movies and they'll go into it. Who knows? Uh, did the, Who knows? It definitely looks like that's a strong possibility. Because at the because he does return to the old house. Yeah, at the, that, that was the other question I had was like, is this actually Leatherface or is this another person who's like copying Leatherface? Like, yeah. because Leatherface in this in this movie has become one of those true crime stories, these yeah. unsolved murder mysteries. Like, who was the man in the mask? Why did he did this or whatever? 
Um, and uh, I like kind of like that element because true crime is such a popular thing right now. It was kind of cool. To yeah, see. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it was also kind of fun to see that they used the, the, the original trailer yeah. for the original yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. It's like the intro to the true crime show about yeah. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was really cool. So, like, I don't know if, like, after the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he just wandered into this town and, like, joined this, this this orphanage and like helped out or something and became one of the boys. I don't know. They don't explain it. And, I, and it is something that bugged me a little bit. It would be cool to see it explained and under, so I can understand it, how it fits with the movies yeah, a little yeah. better. Yeah, you could also, well, the, the thing that's interesting about it is that somehow this old woman mm -hmm. gets Leatherface to like put his chainsaw down. Yeah. And just be like, no, Bubba, you be a good boy. And he's like, Okay, I kind of like the dumbness of the fact that you, they like they like built a wall around it, and so yeah. you have to tear down the wall yeah. to get the chainsaw. <laughs> it's like no, we put it there. That way, it's out of sight, out of mind. Nice. I'm just like, man, he could just like fucking toss it in a garbage heap somewhere. Like, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. He could just like done some. No, no. no. We're, just, we're just gonna. But put it led to that wall. really awesome moment where he's just tearing down the wall. There's a lot of moments that where you're just like. Okay, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's kind of cool. And that's oh, yeah. him like tearing down the wall. And like, yeah. Oh man, one that I really love, but I think one of my favorite gore moments actually is watching uh, the. I forget what he is like the contractor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the hit contractor, the, the mechanic, the mechanic slash contractor. Slash contractor. Like there's a point at which he is trying to save one of the characters. Leatherface gets him. Oh yeah, and his death is bravo damn bravo yeah like leatherface just fucking caves this guy's head in with a sledgehammer and you watch it happen i love the hat trick they pull with that character too because at the beginning i'm like i'm gonna hate this character aren't i he's gonna be a complete douchebag then he starts to like befriend the, the the younger sister yeah and like you start to realize that he's not a complete douchebag like, like yeah 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 he's, he's an asshole yeah yeah but he's a likable asshole you know um, so then when you reach the point where he dies, you actually feel bad about it. And also, he dies trying to save the sister that he hates. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's doing, he's absolutely doing the right thing. The he sister just... that was a complete bitch to him and, like, spoilers, we're in the spoiler section, uh, helped kick out an old woman from her home and gave her a heart attack and she died? Yeah. I'm like, whoa, like, I get the, the fucking Confederate flag thing, like, like, makes him a bit of racist, but... I don't know if that trumps kicking someone out of their home and giving them a heart attack, heart attack. like that. Yeah, that just seems worse. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It it it's all all kinds of bad things. Jesus. Happen. So because Mama's now dead, Leatherface is like, well, there's only one thing left to do. But I like that he took her face. The yeah. face he's wearing throughout oh, this movie God, yeah. is the is the old lady, the mom's face. She cut it cut it off and wore it in his in his quest for vengeance against these four kids or these four teenage teenage influencers yeah um uh and and uh uh the other big spoiler is that sally in this movie is less laurie strode in halloween 2018 and more the guy from texas chainsaw massacre 2 yes She's way more like fucking, um, what's his name? Dennis uh, Hopper. Dennis Hopper yeah. <laughs> in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Like, her quest for vengeance has made her lose her goddamn mind. Yeah. And you get this point in the end where she's like quoting scripture while shooting yeah. them and shit, <laughs> which is just straight out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Um, and what I like about it is that she's not as well prepared as Lori was. No, and no, no. Lori has been like sitting at home and like, like yeah, fucking she's... making traps, making her daughter do drills. Yeah. And, like completely fucking ready. Whereas 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 uh Sally in this, like like she's just ready ready to die. Like she's yeah. she's not ready to survive. She's gonna die taking this. To yeah, this she's guy gonna out. take this motherfucker out. And she's gonna come in guns blazing, sword swinging, like like fucking Dennis Hopper did. Yeah. And much like Dennis Hopper, she shares a very similar fate of dying while trying to take out Leatherface. So. Yep. And so I, I like that because it it, it 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 managed to do the cool thing where like the final girl comes back and gets her her, her last revenge, but without just repeating Halloween 28. Yeah. Yeah, because the 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 thing that this movie does that's really cool is no nah, man, Leatherface lives. Yeah. 
Yeah. No question about it. Oh man, that final fucking kill where the sister, the bitchy sister from the beginning of the movie, who you start to like by this point. Oh just, yeah, by the end of the movie, you start to like her. Just by you know? just by virtue of her relationship to her sister and the fact that she, more than anyone else in the group, recognizes that, oh shit, we fucked up. Yeah. Like she actually recognizes it. Um, but that doesn't save her. <laughs> when she gets decapitated at the very end of this movie, yeah. that, that's one of my favorite fucking things where I'm like, oh man, you managed to like, do a completely new version of the end of the first Texas Chainsaw yeah, Massacre yeah. with the fucking self-driving car driving her yeah. away <laughs> while her sister's getting decapitated and Leatherface is fucking swinging his arm. And I was just like, okay, this is full on fan service. Oh, but, but, but I, I love, love it. it. I love it. I love it. I also like little stupid details. I like the fact that when the guys got the grill going and the grill opens, it's the sound. It's the chainsaw sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's dumb. I love it. Yeah. So yeah, this movie is not perfect. There are things that I, I would have probably done a little differently. And there are things that I'm like, that, 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 that's like a fridge moment. You go to your fridge and you're like, wait that, a minute. Does that make any sense? <laughs> but the fact that I had such a good time and I didn't notice most of it while watching uh, says a lot, really. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because that's that's the hat trick. It's a you, trick of a movie. It's one of those, a movie can have flaws, but if you're emotionally invested in the movie, then the flaws won't matter as much. But if you're not emotionally invested in the movie, then the flaws will stick out in like like a sore thumb. Well, if you're not emotionally invested in the movie, anything that the movie's got going for it doesn't matter. Yeah. There's a lot of moments uh, in that house that are very Don't Breathe-esque. Yeah. You know, like I like, yeah. the, like, the, like the scene where the, the hit guy comes in and she's like under the bed and she's like trying to move the mirror so that he could see Leatherface hiding behind the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's a really cool tense moment. Yeah. Like that's... There's yeah, some a lot of cool stuff like that. Absolutely. And I also just kind of like fucking girl who fucking survived a school shooting having to take out Leatherface or at least try to take out Leatherface and face her fears. Oh, yeah. That just that, works for me. Well, the school yeah. shooting, the school shooting thing, that's going to be uh, the Vietnam of a lot of movies going mm -hmm. forward. That's going to be the thing that like, def unfortunately, a thing that defines a generation. I also like it because it's a moment where when she reveals that's what happened to her. Because mm -hmm. um, up until this point, we've seen that she has a gun wound on her on her shoulder. We don't know what happened, but she has like a bullet wound on her shoulder. Yeah. And she's obviously really interested in like true crime shit. And all that yeah, stuff, yeah, For whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. But she like, she walks into the mechanic shop, the, the contractor slash mechanic. The contractor, because he's actually, he's being paid to renovate all the houses that, that, yeah. they, that they bought up so that they can turn them into this whatever like weird mini Disneyland Whatever the thing. Fuck! They're trying to turn this guy. They're trying thing to turn into. it into an influencer Disneyland, basically. Fuck! Who <laughs> the fuck is gonna drive seven hours? Well, yeah, I, it's it, it it makes no sense. Yeah, like, it makes yeah. This is one of those like it's a harebrained scheme. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you right now. This makes no logical sense, but I'm saying this right here. I would believe someone like Logan Paul would do it. Uh, so so she goes in and talks to the mechanic guy who at this point, you're not sure, like, is he gonna be a threat to the kids? Is he gonna be a friend to the kids? You're not quite sure where he's gonna land. And uh, she expresses interest in his guns and like asks about them and stuff like that. And then she tries to hold one and has a flashback and then like has to sit down and then expl explains her, her history uh, with the school shooting to the guy and it's this great moment where the guy who was like the pro gun guy walking around with right. the guns and like the other the other sister was like making fun of him for being a big man with a gun and all that stuff. Like he has that moment where he kind of like humanly connects yeah. with the girl like yeah. understanding why she's not into guns. Into guns, <laughs> you yeah. know. And uh, uh, I really like that moment. It's a no, human it, moment. It is a human uh, moment. In, in, yeah. in a really ridiculous movie. Yeah, well, it, it, it makes you like the guy just enough that you care that he gets killed. Exactly. You know? And it makes her a really good final girl. It does. Yeah. You know? Makes her a really good final girl. Cause now she's got a thing that on top of everything else, she's got to emotionally overcome by the end of it. And that great moment when Sally's just like, no, if you run away now, he's going to haunt gonna you haunt you forever. Which, I mean, she, she understands that because she's haunted by what happened yeah. to her yeah. to this day. And like picks up Sally's shotgun and then yeah, goes in. Kill, tries to kill Leatherface, which which probably Unfortunately doesn't succeed. Which, to be fair, probably not the smartest thing to do, but I get it. I emotionally am with her in that moment. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's not smart to do, but I get why she's doing it. Well, know? like the thing, uh, one of the things that's kind of cool about Leatherface is that he's got that. 
Michael Myers thing before they ruined it with the Cult of Thorns. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is just what is this guy? Yeah, yeah. Like, what is this guy? <laughs> like, like, how the fuck does he just kill this many people? It's a very good question. Yeah, and that they they managed to keep that mystique about Leatherface. Yeah. You know, they didn't, like, try to be like, well, he was, like, you know, part of a medical experiment or nope. something. No, no, that shit. There's no cult of Leatherface. It's just, no, he's just an unstoppable Bubba. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like, like the most you can really figure out about him is that he's mentally challenged in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all, that's all you've got, because, like, I, yeah... A mentally normal person doesn't wear other people's faces. Yeah, you know? like, yeah, yeah. Well, and he, and he obviously seems like he's repressed, like, like, like mentally in some way. Oh yeah, definitely. Like he's very childlike in many ways, especially in like some of like like the second movie really kind of reveals that. Yeah. Now, to be fair, there's different inc incarnations of Leatherface in a lot of these movies. I'm pretty sure Leatherface in three and four is a completely different Leatherface. In those two movies, yeah, because they're completely different families with completely different dynamics, and so you're like, is this the same Leatherface? I don't fucking know. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was that was always the problem with like uh, that was that was the big problem with uh, Leatherface mm. Texas yeah. Chainsaw Three, you know, which is it felt like it wasn't following up with Te Texas Chainsaw Two, which yeah. is I think what everyone wanted. That that's the one that feels the most like a sequel to the first movie, and everything else is either a reboot or a re yeah, yeah, because even even if it's tonally completely different. Oh yeah, oh yeah, but so is Road Warrior. So is right? Road Warrior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that first that first Mad Max movie is depressing. Yeah, yeah. And Road Warrior is just an intense, awesome action movie. Yep. You know. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on this movie? No, I liked it. Yeah. I, that's all. Like, it's it's a really really fun movie. It's not gonna not gonna change your life. Nope. But uh, four stars. The, the thing is, check this. Let's check it if out. Any of the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequels, past two, would allow themselves to be this fun, even with the flaws they had. I probably would enjoy them more. You yeah, know? It's definitely. Just, it's just that simple. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds. Where can they find you? Oh, you can find me on YouTube at Planet Dracula channel. You can also find me on Twitter at Counting Jack. And you can find me on Instagram at Satanic Dracula. How about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, then be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. What'd be a good hashtag for this one? Ooh. Hashtag put your face on. All right, if you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using the hashtag put your face on. Work it into your comment however you please. And that way I know, that way Jack knows, that way the whole world knows you watch this vlog all the way through. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, we're probably gonna record just one more vlog. Um, I'm starting to lose my voice for whatever reason. I don't know if I had like an allergy thing or if my medication's messing with me or what the fuck's happening right now. So we're just gonna record one more after this and uh, that'll be a wrap for the day. So uh, peace out and I'll catch all of y'all later.